Hi, I'm Adam from the Mimu team, and in this video I'm going to give you a quick start introduction to using Glover with the Mimu gloves. Uh, it's not going to be an incredibly in-depth video where we go over every feature that Glover has to offer. Um, it's more going to be a quick start route, getting you from no knowledge to uh, being able to just dive in and, and make your own music. So, um, so let's start at the beginning. What is Glover? So Glover is a piece of software for composing music using gesture. And in a specific regard to your Mimu gloves, it's a piece of software that allows you to decide which gestures you want to make, and then link those to third-party music software. And this is a key point because Glover doesn't make any sound on its own. It, it, it's, it's a link between your gestures and whatever third-party music software or hardware that you are using. So um, how does it do this? So it does this by linking gestures to uh, musical messages, and, and by that I mean either MIDI, uh, which which most music software will will understand, and uh, we also support another protocol called OSC, uh, which if you don't know what it is, then don't worry about that. But um, it could be useful for some people. So so I've got Ableton Live running in the background here. Um, Ableton Live is a it's a, a popular choice for um, using uh, in conjunction with Glover, but you really don't have to do that. It can be any music software that supports some sort of um, MIDI uh, assignment or, or something like that. So, um, okay, so let's 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 dive right in. So um, here I am in Glover. So what we're going to do, um, I've got my gloves connected to a router. And so, so um, and that they're, they're on. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to hit this plus button at the top where it says devices. Now, Glover supports a lot of different devices, but we're interested in the gloves here. Um, so we're going to hit plus and we're going to add a Mimu glove left. And it spins here and then you see now uh, it's connected. Now, uh, it's possible that that, that um, your gloves might be off or uh, that there might be some uh, connection troubleshooting. So you might instead see this symbol. So if, if I click on it, what that's done is disconnected it. So if you see that, you can click on this symbol and it, and it will then connect. So I'm now just going to add a, a right glove. There we go. So I've got now I've got my two gloves. So this is the kind of glove panel. Um, and, and, and you know, you can, can do a few things here. We can we can name our gloves. So I'm going to I'm going to name my gloves Adam left and Adam right. This is going to be useful later when we're mapping when we want to differentiate between one glove and another. Um, we can also see the, the 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 wireless connectivity strength. We can see the battery level. The, the color of the LEDs, the gloves have LEDs on them, and we can see the current posture and the di current direction. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on um, this, this this left glove here, and what we see is this area down here has appeared, and now this is this is the inspector, um, it allows us to inspect um, various parts of the software. So this is the, the glove inspector, so I'm just going to go over a few things here. So uh, we've got, this is the glove panel, so I can, I can sort of bend my fingers here, and you can see the uh, the sensors moving. Uh, there's a few other things. This 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 button will trigger the vibration motor. Uh, if I press the button on my glove, like this, you can see the the the, the button goes here. Um, this clicking here allows us to set the LED color. So if I I'm going to set change this color to pink here. Um, if we it's quite good to keep this up the top right here just because. Over here, we kind of faded out to white, and that means that all of these colors are not going to really trigger. So, so keep it in the top right here, and then drag this up and down, unless you want white, of course, or black. So um, this button is, is the calibration button. What, what this does is it basically allows us to set the minimum and maximum uh, positions um, of our sensors, and it kind of gives us a bit more range here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this button once and then and then I'm going to kind of open and close my hand slowly like this and you'll see all the sensors have gone to the top here and then I'm going to hit the button again and now you'll see I have much more range here so this let's move on this is the orientation panel so um, this this is sort of tracking all the movements that we have so this we, this is the roll of my wrist so this is as I as I roll my wrist you here you can see this this sensor moving. Then we have pitch. So pitch is like is like the angle. If you imagine the angle of your elbow, going from all the way to the top here, going to all the way down to the floor. So it's not it's it's not this. It's not like a height thing. It's 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 the angle. So think of your elbow as like a sort of fixed point. Um, and then we have yaw. So yaw is 
to do with at this angle. Okay, so as I as I move my 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 arm this way. Now you see this doesn't center here in the software because the software knows which way north is, but it doesn't know which way we're facing because we have never told it. So um, we actually need to sort of set forwards um, and say that okay, um, let's. So this button here on the software, when I press it, you'll see that the the the, the meter here jumps to the center. Now forwards is this way for me, and then if I move out to the left or out to the right, it will always come back to the middle there. And this is useful because if, I, if I'm on stage, I could switch uh, and to turn 90 degrees and start playing a, 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 a synthesizer or something, and then uh, forwards would be different. And so you can actually set this programmatically during uh, from the gloves, and, and we'll maybe look at that a bit later. So then, then we have the drum hits panel. So we have um, drum hits, so that's like putting, your, imagine you're holding a drumstick and then hitting a, hitting, you know, hitting a drum like this. Then we've got this one, which we call sort of slap. It's kind of like a bouncing a, a a basketball, I guess. And then we've got wrist flick. So this part is the posture training panel. So this basically allows us to to recognize different postures from the glove, like fist or an open hand or a one finger point or really anything you want. And then to use these as, as controls. And this is really powerful. So uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to I'm going to make a fist. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to click this once, and then I'm going to open my hand, and I'm going to, I'm going to click this one, and I'm going to make a one finger point, and I'm going to click this one. So what I've done, I've just shown it three examples of this. Now nothing's happening because I need to now hit save here. Now when I hit save, when I make a fist, you'll see this. This goes uh, yellow, and when I open my hand, then this one goes, and when I do one finger point, then uh, this one is recognised. So. You can you can teach it up to up to nine postures. What we recommend is that you actually show it more than one example. So if you can show it about ten examples, so maybe I'm gonna now add this up and make it make it ten. And then ten open hands and ten one finger points. Hit save. Now it this is just going to make the, the recognition more accurate because it's seen more examples of each of those postures. If you want to add other postures, so then you can just go in. So, so we have we have puppet hand. This is what we call puppet hand. But I'm gonna I'm gonna teach it a new one because I want to show you if if I if I control click on here, I can do rename posture, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just call this pinch, and just to just to to, to show you, you can also hold shift and click on this label, and you can just then change it from there as well. So um, yeah, so we've got pinch now. So now if I if I make a pinch gesture. I can show it 10, 10 examples of pinch, and again, it won't recognize it. I've done a few too many. Um, it, it won't recognize it until I hit save, and then now we've got pinch, okay, as well as open hand and one finger point and fist. So um, then if you decide you don't want a posture, you can control click on this, and you can do remove all posture examples of this type, and then you hit save again, and then now we're back to our three postures. So you can have up to nine. Um, this is you can choose whatever postures you like, and this is your way to kind of define which gestures work for you. Um, this is the undo button. So if you if you do add an example, you can hit undo, and then it'll just take that one away. And this delete button will get rid of all of the postures. Um, I won't do that now. So we've got a couple couple more things here. Um, we have the this is this is a, a glove health check, which I can't do now because I've calibrated the glove. But this is useful for testing and diagnosing the gloves. This is a um, for, for, for looking at the, the wireless con connectivity. So this is um, looking at, this is the, the, the rate of all of the different sensors coming into, into, into the software. So uh, this is useful if you're trying to d diagnose uh, connection stability. Um, you can mute your glove. Um, that means it, it, will, it won't be used. And then we also have the, uh, the right glove, of course. And um, I'm not going to train that now because uh, I'm going to do that uh, uh, very quickly. And then we're going to move on to the next section. And so now I've I've um, trained my uh, right glove to have some postures too. So I've got postures on uh, both gloves, and now we're ready to start making some music. So um, you can see here in this part that says device inputs, um, we've got the two gloves, and then we've got for each glove we've got um, 
a list of all of the different types of inputs that it that it, that it has. So um, we've got the orientation, which is the sort of pitch, uh, roll, and yaw that we saw. We've got postures. We've got the directions, which are up, down, forwards, uh, left, right, and backwards. Um, we've got drum hits. We've got button presses. We've got the flex sensors, the individual flex sensor values, and we've got the palm tilt. So this is the sort of tilt of my palm in four different positions. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to press I. And what that does is it creates a mapping input. It's currently an empty mapping input, but this is the place where we're going to compose and create a gesture. So to do that, I'm going to go here to my left glove and orientation, and I'm going to choose roll. And I'm just going to drag that into here. And you'll see we suddenly get a reading here. This is the value. Now, as I, as I roll my wrist um, around, you can see this value changing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my 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 wrist to to a to one position. I'm going to say, right, this is the minimum value. It's the minimum position. I'm going to move it to the top, and that's going to be the maximum position. So now we've kind of scaled this value, uh, this input, so that the, we've set the range of it, and that's going to now convert that and send an output value of between zero and one two seven. One two seven is this sort of uh, MIDI related number. It's to do with the way binary numbers work as to why it's such a weird number but that's so basically that's the maximum control change value for for a, for a MIDI message um, you don't need to worry too much about that so what we're going to do we now want to send this to some music software so we're going to go here, here and we're going to press O and then we're going to choose a MIDI message now I'm going to drag this into here and we've got um, a MIDI message if you if you aren't too sure about MIDI messages um, we've, we've created another video where we give a really high level explanation uh, as to as to sort of just the basics of, of of kind of the kind of messages you'll need to use in Glover, so um, I recommend checking that out. I'll link to it in in in, in the description. So we've, what we've got here is a, is a, is a MIDI control change message on channel one, and it's control uh, change number twenty. So think about this as like a, a channel or a pipe into the music software, and it, this is number twenty. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go up here, and I'm going to hover over here and I'm going to then click and drag and make a connection between uh, these two um, map this mapping input and this mapping output so now this this roll parameter is now sending out of the software as a, as a MIDI message uh, and it can be picked up by other music software so if we go into Ableton Live now now before we do any MIDI mapping in Ableton Live, you need to, to set up some preferences first, just once. So if you go to Live and Preferences, you need to make sure that for input for Glover, Remote is on. The other thing you need to make sure is that Takeover mode is none. Um, you might want to use a different Takeover mode, and if you know what you're doing, then great. Um, but most of you will not want to have Takeover mode on. Um, Right, so we're now going to use this parameter that, that, that we've created. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and I'm going to get uh, a sample here. I've got this drum loop. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm, I've, I've got this video audio which is sending so you can hear me. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> send this drum loop into that as well. Otherwise, um, you won't be able to hear me, but you don't need to do this. So I want to play this loop. Turn it down a bit. That's what we've got going on, um, and we're gonna. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an audio effect on it. So um, I'm gonna choose the frequency shifter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control this fine property here. So if I play the loop, I'm just gonna uh, adjust this with the mouse, and you'll hear what it's supposed to do. Cool. But I want to do that with my gloves. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go in here. And we've got our, we're just going to look again, we've got our parameter, we're rolling our wrist, and that's sending to MIDI control change message 20 on channel 1, so 1 slash 20. To, to, to do this, I'm going to click on the parameters. When you click on these parameters, you see they've got little square brackets that appear around them. I'm just going to click on this one. I'm going to go up to MIDI here, where it says MIDI, and that puts us into MIDI mapping mode. Now I'm in, in MIDI mapping mode. I click on this parameter, and it's immediately picked it up because it was sense, sensing that come in. And you can see it's picked up this message, channel 1, message 20. And so if I go and hit MIDI again, it'll take us out of MIDI mapping mode. Now you can see that as I roll my wrist around, I'm controlling this parameter, which is pretty cool. So let's play the loop. So 
So that's 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 pretty fun. Um, but there's one thing, you know, I, I'm there's an issue with this. Like I'm controlling this all the time. I I really want to actually just be able to select it and then and then choose to control it and then be able to sort of let go again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here into my posture list here. I'm going to choose puppet hand. This is puppet hand. Like your thumb meets your other four postures, and I'm just going to drag this puppet hand in with the roll. Now you'll see that this graph has stopped. Now, but when I do make a puppet hand, then it's back again. And then as soon as I let go of the puppet hand, the graph stops. So this means that I can actually control when I'm sending this value or not. Um, so if we go back now to Ableton, and you'll see when I make a puppet hand, and I, I'm now controlling the parameter, and I, make, I stop making a puppet hand, and it goes, right? So this is a way for us to easily be able to, to um, control a parameter. So I'm now just going to show you, I'm going to play this play this uh, this loop and I can grab it and make this adjustment and then and then that that I can choose when I'm, I'm operating it there's one more thing I'd like to do this has got a value between 0 and 127 I quite like it that when I let go of the, of, 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 of the parameter that it that it would actually just go back to 0 again now that's in the middle of the of, of the value range so this this goes between minus 500 and 500 that's its parameter range but in MIDI terms it's the middle value between 0 and 127 just that that value is 64 is halfway between those two values so I'm going to do that I'm going to turn on this reset on release so this is going to now send the value 64 whenever I let go and stop making the posture so let's try again so I've now pitched it all the way down and I let go and you'll see this snaps snaps back to 0 so that that's 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 really cool. So we're going to do um, one more thing with this. So so we're gonna we're gonna control like a beat beat repeat effect. I'm gonna put this before the frequency shifter. So I'm gonna take down the chance to zero because we don't want chance to be involved here. And what this does, I'll just do it with the mouse again. I press press the. Um, I'm gonna make it an insert as well. Um, I'm gonna play the loop. I'm gonna press it with the with the mouse. So the repeat just kind of captures a bit of the beat, and when I let go, it, it plays it again. So let's do this with the gloves. I'm going to go to my right glove, and I'm going to choose a posture fist. Now, I'm not going to create a mapping input here. I'm just going to drag it in here, and it automatically will create one for me. So then I'm going to create another output here. I'm going to create another MIDI message. And you'll see this one is now channel 1, message 21. Um, Glover tries to sort of, you know, pick MIDI messages you're not using. It's not always successful, but uh, it does. And if you're wondering why it starts at 20, there's basically some MIDI messages don't have a predefined purpose. So uh, Glover tries to use those ones rather than the ones that are your sustain pedal or something like that. Um, right. So we're now going to connect these together. And I could go and make a MIDI mapping, but there's a problem, which is that Ableton is listening out for... Um, parameters coming in, but we're constantly already sending this 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 other one, um, and uh, that you know to, to control the frequency shifter. And so, how can it recognize the, this fist, and how can it tell them apart? So, the truth is, it can't. And so, what we do, we hit, we have to solo this new map, this new um, control, to uh, allow Ableton to see it. So, what I'm going to do, I've soloed it now, and then I'm going to go into MIDI mapping mode. I'm, this time, I'm going to do it with a shortcut. It's Command M. Uh, and it goes blue. I click on repeat and I make a fist with my right hand. And we see here 121, which is our other message. And you also see in the list here, we've now got our first message and our other um, our other MIDI CC as well for, for controlling the, the beat repeat. So I'm going to hit Command M again. We're out of MIDI mapping mode. And if you have a look here, I made a fist. But the, the problem is that uh, basically, like, it's turned it on, but I have no way to turn it off because. I've sent I've I've sent it a message to turn on, but I don't have any other way to switch it off. So currently, this so this is you'll notice that these two inputs look a bit different. So this one, the first one we did with the roll on the puppet hand, this is a, this is what we call a movement, and it's of a value that takes a um, a certain range. The other one is an event. So um, you'll see you'll notice it says event here, and this one says movement. So the event. Basically, it sort of happens. So me making a fist is an event. It's something that happens, right? And it's kind of, it's it's a it's a it's a sort of trigger thing. So this one's called trigger. But if I hit um, 
this trigger thing, it switches to another mode called toggle. And what this does is, if you look up the, up here at these lights, so if I make a fist once, it you see the light go at the top, and I make it again, it goes to the second one. So it basically alternates between the two. So what I can do is connect this to there, and you notice that for the, for the main output value, it sends 127, which is a sort of MIDI, uh, you know, the bit, the highest MIDI control value. And for the other value, it sends a zero. So now I'm sending different values when I do fifths. So if you have a look here, I make a fist, and it'll turn it off. I make another one, and it turns it on. So this is a way to switch in and switch out of this of this beat repeat. But this is actually not the way I want to do it. There's a third mode called uh, gate. And what this does, if again, if you have a look up here, I make a fist, and the light goes on. And when I stop making a fist, the other light triggers. So this sends the I, it allows me to make a fist and then let go. So this makes it really kind of grab things and then let go of them again. So, so now I'm going to make a fist and the beat repeat has gone on and then I'm going to stop making a fist and it's gone off. So I'm just going to uh, now play this loop uh, and we should be able to, to see what's going on. Ah, I almost forgot. In order to be able to use everything in conjunction, we have to unsolo and go back to everything. So I can either unsolo by clicking here or I can just hit this S and everything that's soloed will will then go away. So now now we're now we're ready to to, to have a go. So I'm gonna hit play the loop again. And when I make a fist it grabs that and when I let go it's it's there again. So I can and then I'm gonna you know grab a bit but I still got this I can kind of pitch it up and down. So this is really how we make kind of simple mappings in Glover. We just we we, we build together these these um, collections of, of of gestures and then outputs, and this becomes you know some sort of a thing here. I've made we've made a kind of drum loop manipulator here, and um, that's quite fun. Th there's one thing I think we should do, which is that it's a bit annoying to see all these MIDI CCs and not really remember which is which. So we can actually name them here. So this one was the frequency shifter, it's the fine parameter, and this one is the um uh it was the beat repeat so now it's a bit clearer to us um, what everything does so i'm now also going to i can just click on some of these i'm going to color these you, you just control click or right click on these to do this i'm going to set them to a different color so that i can kind of tell that what which is for which effect and now i've kind of got we've got our our uh set of mappings and um, this is the right time to, to introduce what we call a scene. So you can see it says scene one here, and a scene is just a collection of these mappings. And so collectively, these are our this are drum loop. Um, yeah, we'll call this this is the drum loop stuff. And and so now we're we're gonna uh, go on and have a look at uh, some other possibilities in a new scene. So now that we've made our first scene, this uh, drum loop thing. We're gonna we're gonna go and make a second scene, and we're gonna look at some of the other functionality that Glover has to offer. So we go to the scenes list here in the sidebar, and we're gonna we're gonna hit the plus button. So that's created a new scene, and um, when I click on the the, the new scene, um, everything disappears here because we're now in scene two, and that's an empty scene. If I if I click on drum loop, um, all of that stuff we made is still there. So um, this is an important point to understand. So that the the um, only the mappings in the active scene are current, are sending out to the, your music software or hardware. So when we go into scene two, all of the drum loop stuff now is not active and, and is not is not being used. And so, so this ability to separate between different bits of functionality means that we we have the ability to um, to create different modes for the gloves, and then we can switch between them as well during our performance. So what we're going to do in this one, we're going to go up here and we're going to hit this instrument uh, button. And there's two instruments there, the note matrix and chord machine. We're going to start with the chord machine. What this allows us to do is it allows us to play chords using gestures without needing to program in every single um, MIDI note. So um, we've got a keyboard here and we've got 12 chords, but first I'm going to go into Ableton Live and set up a sound. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to drag this bright marimba sound in and I'm going to pipe it into the video audio so you can hear it. And I'm going to go back to uh, Glover. So in the chord machine, I'm going to program in a chord. And then I click on number two. And that's this empties out now because this is the second one. And I, I'm going to program in another chord. 
So I've got my two chords. Um, and then what we, what, if I click on the C minor one here, it, you can see it says drop device inputs here. So now I'm going to go in, I'm going to choose the directions on my left glove, I'm going to choose up. So whenever I point up with my left glove, it plays the C minor chord. I'm actually going to add another uh, um, uh, condition here, so I have to make a fist. So I point up, and then I make a fist, and it plays the chord. So um, for, the, for the other chord, I'm going to say that whenever I point forwards and make a fist, so I now have, I will play up and make a fist to play the first chord, and forwards to make the second chord. Um, and that's it really, I mean you can program a lot of chords in, you can choose what gestures you want to play them. There's a few, a couple of things here, maybe um, one small thing I'll show is just this note spread, so you can add a bit of variation between the notes so that it's more of a strum than a, than a, than a everything happening at exactly the same time. So now we're going to have a look at the note matrix, and the note matrix is a way to play melodies. So um, what we're going to do, we're going to add another sound here. So we're going to add some street bells, and we're going to pipe this into the video audio. So we're going to have a bit of a problem here, because both the note matrix and the chord machine are going to be sending MIDI notes, and both of these um, uh, synthesizers are saying they're listening to all channels from every input. So we need to actually separate things out a bit here. So we're going to say that this is only listening to Glover on channel 7, that's the chord machine stuff, and then the other, this new, 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 new note matrix one is going to be everything from Glover on channel 8. So I'm going to go in here back to my chord machine and I'm going to say you're on channel 7 and then in the note matrix that's on channel 8 and now they're separate. So what we can do in a note matrix is we can just pro, pro, program in a melody. So I'm going to put some notes in. So we've got uh, some 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 notes there, and then I can just add a. It says drop device inputs here. I can add like a movement, like a like pitch. So and I can now I can play through that melody with my with my hand. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add um, another condition that. This only happens so when I when I make a one finger point. So now if I move my hand, nothing happens. And when I make a one finger point, so this is just a nice way to play melodies. So we've got chord machine for chords, note matrix for melodies. Um, so let's call our scene here melodies, uh, melodies and chords. Okay, so what would be really great is if we could switch between the melodies and chords and the drum loop. Um, without having to, to click with the mouse. So in the next section, we're going to look at ways that we can transition between these two scenes. So how do we switch between these scenes? So um, what we're going to do, we're going to actually set up some gestures to switch between the scenes uh, directly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here to my left glove, and I'm going to choose, uh, in drum hits, I'm going to choose wrist flick. So whenever I flick my wrist, you see the spike pops up, and you see this lights up, so I've got this wrist flick action. Well, then I'm going to add a mapping output, and then I'm going to choose scene switch here. So it's scene switch, I'm going to choose, I can choose which scene, so I'm going to choose the drum loop scene, and then I'm going to connect these together. So now, whenever I do this wrist flick, it will change us into the drum loop scene. And I'm just going to add um, a similar one uh, for the right glove, no, I want the right glove, sorry. So the right glove wrist flick uh, is going to take me back to the other scene. So that's to go now, so I connect those together, and now I've got, uh, sorry, yes, let me get this right, I've got right wrist flick takes me to the melodies and chords, left wrist flick takes me to the drum loop. So this is, this is just a, a neat way, I don't need to uh, look at the computer, I can just immediately switch between the two scenes and, and, and uh, change what the gloves are doing. But wouldn't it be nice if we actually had some feedback uh, that this had worked and that we also knew which scene we were in? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, a mapping output and then we're going to go to device feedback here and then we're going to choose my left glove and choose LED color solid and I'm just going to uh, pick green okay so um, 
what 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 we need to do now is add another device feedback and then I'm going to choose my other glove LED color solid and I'm going to choose green again so this is both of my LEDs in the same mapping output so they can actually be expanded here um, you can create these kind of uh, combinations so this this now uh, is set up to to turn my LEDs green but how do I make it happen so the answer is this button here it's called initializer so what an initializer is is it's a, a mapping output that when you enter a scene that map that mapping output is trigger triggered so it initializes things and it doesn't have to be just the LEDs you could use this as with MIDI messages to trigger um, turning on a channel for example or, or activating some sort of effect in uh, for, for a given scene so if I hit initializer you see this eye pop up here and that's that's now uh, an initializer so what we're going to do we're going to we're going to go back to the melodies and chords scene and now when I do my left wrist flick what we what we're going to see is at the moment my my LEDs are uh, yellow and red but when I do a left wrist flick they've now gone green and that tells me that I've gone into the drum loop scene um so we're going we're just going to do the similar thing I'm going to copy and paste this um and I'm going to change the colors now for this one so that they're yellow yellow on one and let's have you know blue on the other so this is now an initializer in the melodies and chords scene so left wrist flick triggers to make it green and the right wrist flick triggers and i've got the the yellow and blue LED, um, leds on on the gloves so this is a way for me to just know which scene i'm in without having to look at the um the, the 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 computer screen so this really sets us free to to switch up modes of the gloves without having to think about it all that much well, um a couple of things to say so i would not normally use wrist flicks just to for to switch scene it's it's like it's going to trigger all the time i probably have some condition like uh being pointing up and or or something or something else but you'd have to come up with your own kind of ways to switch between scenes in in whatever works for you so um i'm going to go through uh, a couple of things to do with scenes. So, with what, one one of the things that I said before is that only the things in the active scene are sending. Now, um, this is true most of the time. However, if we um, control click on this, we can go here and we can actually make a scene always active. So that means that if we were melodies and chords, this drum loop scene is now always active, um, regardless, even though it's not the current scene. And then we have one other thing, which is we might want a scene. We might want to reinforce this rule that, um, let's, let's say we had a couple of other scenes, that this specific specific scene um, is an ex it, it, it is an exclusive scene, and what that does is it, it even for the always active scenes, it makes sure that this scene is is only sending um, uh, data out, and all the other scenes are, are are deactivated, even if they're always active scenes. So th these are these are tools to help us sort of segment things and I'm about to show you an example of why we might want to 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 um to do something like this. So um we we talked a little bit before about setting forwards with the gloves. So we said we 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 can set, use this button and that sets forwards. Um this is a bit annoying we want to be able to do it programmatically. So I'm going to create a new scene and I'm going to add my left glove button and then I'm going to create a mapping output and I'm going to say left glove set forwards and then um, I'm going to do the same for my right glove so just with the left button alone I can now set forwards so now when I go into this mapping and I turn around I can now use my left button and if you if you if you pay attention here um, I use my left button and now it triggers straight to the center now if I move back and face forward again, uh, this is now sent, this is now forward. So we can set forwards programmatically and um, I'm going to do set forwards, give it a name. And this is the kind of thing that we might want to have always active. So now even when I'm in drum loop or the melodies and chords, I can use this set forwards action and uh, make sure that I'm, I've, I've got my frame of reference set up correctly. Um, one more thing that we might want to do in here, we might want to just have a little notification that we that we did this correctly. So we can have the vibration motor uh, send some kind of uh, 
pulse to to to, to both gloves as well. So that way I, I can know that set forwards has definitely happened. There we go. So now I've got the, a vibration whenever whenever I set forwards. So this is a really neat way for us to, to organize things. Um, but in the next section, we're going to have a look at what we can do with this collection of scenes because we have a name for that and it's called an arrangement. So what is an arrangement? So an arrangement is basically a way for us to collect together groups of scenes. So we've seen that a scene is a collection of mappings. Well, an arrangement is a collection of scenes. And a, a kind of the original concept of an arrangement was that you'd have an arrangement per song and that um, e each arrangement would contain all of the scenes you had for a given song. Um, you don't have to use it that way, but that, that's kind of how it was conceived of. So up the top here, it says new arrangement. And I'm actually going to go up here. I'm going to call this my first song. Um, so that's this is now the, the, the my first song, uh, the arrangement too. Now, now if, if I hit the plus button, I can actually create another arrangement. So it's my second song. And now we're in a completely new arrangement and um, it's still part of the same project. And um, I can go back to, you can see, or you'll notice, we haven't got any scenes. We've got, you know, nothing going on really, but the same gloves. Um, so we can go back to our first song and there's all our, our scenes from before, um, which is good. And then um, in our second song, we can just go back and start making a whole new thing. And this means it's all acts, all the, all there in one project for us, like all of our all of our songs, and we don't need to be switching between projects. We've got some some other things that are really helpful as well. So if you look at this paperclip here, so this uh, this um, you can either hit this plus button or drag files in. You can drag in, let's say, like an Ableton Live project or or whatever project from actually any software that's running on your computer. Um, and then what you, you could also have a PDF file. It could be for your lyrics or whatever. And you drag these files in. I can't do this here now because I'm, I'm running Ableton Live and it will um, uh, it will stop the audio if I try and do this um, to show you. So you're just going to have to believe me. But you, you drag in these project files and then you hit auto load files in perform mode. So what happens is that as lo you've got this perform mode, this P thing here. And now if that's on, then when we... When we enter my second song here, what would happen if we if I if I if I'd set up some um, uh, projects that those uh, Ableton Live projects or whatever would automatically open? So that means that you can just go here during your set and switch songs, and your the the, the associated um, uh, projects for that song will automatically open, which is really useful. So you don't even have to think about it. You can set this up in advance. The reason we have this is that. Um, you might be editing, you're editing, and, and you don't want your huge projects with all their samples uh, to, to open up whenever you like change the arrangement. So you might just want to turn that off, do your editing, and then when it comes to perform, you go into perform mode, and then the, the, all of these um, uh, files can, 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 can uh, be auto-loaded for you. So that's, that's quite, that's quite uh, exciting. So the, the, the last couple of things to go through are, I'm going to... I'm going to add um, another mapping input here, um, and I'm just going to hit the do the button on my right glove, and I'm going to connect this to a global mute. So global mute, um, this basically uh, is uh, it's this. So if I if I turn this off, then nothing gets sent out of Glover at all. And if I turn it on, then uh, then everything gets sent. So we can actually access this. So we can actually have this as, as a mapping. So I can press the, the right button down, uh, and that will now turn turn this off. But how do we turn it on again? So basically, it needs to be sent. Um, a value bigger than zero will turn will will enable global mute, and a, a value of zero will disable it. So uh, it'd be better to do this in toggle mode because then we can send through the top uh, input. Uh, one two seven and send zero through the bottom one. So I'm now going to uh, press this with my button, and now I can toggle on and off with with the right button. I might that that this I may may or not may or may not want to do this, but it might be a useful thing for me to do if I if I want to stop uh, all sounds, for example, between um, between scenes. Um, the final thing to, to discuss is this, which is an exit message. 
an exit message just kind of the, the opposite of an initializer. So it, it's messages which are sent when you leave a scene. So um, you might use this to, if you wanted to turn on uh, an effect when you entered a certain scene automatically and then, then turn it off when you left it, you'd send an initializer when, to, when you enter the scene to turn it on and an exit message um, to disable it when you leave the scene. So that's what uh, uh, exit messages are for. So I hope this has been a useful uh, introduction to Glover. Um, if you've got any thoughts uh, and feedback, do do try this feedback button and, and you can hit that and you can send us your thoughts. If you've got uh, feature requests or bugs or problems or just uh, that goes straight to us. And we've got some presets here as well, which you can you can click on and try without having to do uh, mapping. So um, yeah, I hope this has been useful. And uh, if you've got any questions at all, then just get in touch and uh, good luck.